Hello and welcome once again to my layout, New Junction. Tonight we stick with the scenery as I assemble and paint a bridge in this episode. Stick around and stay tuned and I'll show you how I go about some messy modelling. So I have taken myself off to the local model shop and treated myself to some pocket money kits as I call them, the Wills kits. Now as you can see I have the abutments and wing walls from Wills kits, that's SS64 and the uh, accompanying SS57, the Gerda bridge spans. Now very very simple kits and I think very satisfying for the would-be modeler who wants to do a bit more than having something off the shelf but not quite a full-on scratch build. Now in essence you get a kit full of um, plastic card like this which you just trim down um, and of course once it's painted up I like to end up something looking very similar to that. Now this still needs a lot of work however you can see the difference already. Right, let's not skip too far ahead. So, the bits I use with these are your trusty scalpel, as you can see. Lovely scalpel, which I've been using heavily on the track. Talking of track, my uh, track cutters and some Revel plastic glue. Very simple. So, let's skip ahead. I'll take these out and I'll uh, roughly place them all to glue them all together and then we'll roughly place them in position. Ooh, isn't it getting exciting? just like that we have some bridges roughly in place now these are not glued in by any means as you can see they're still loose I've just put them in uh, roughly as best I can into the foam um, so I can get a gist of how they're going to fit um, another reason not to glue them in place is so I can take them out and paint them and things like that a lot of fettling need to do but as you can see the essence is there and you can see very very simple kits and look at the difference that's made. That's really brought the scene together and it just marries up um, the Heritage Railway with the main line. And it just makes you think that when these were originally built, because they're the same, I suppose, style, it just gives the impression that the two railways have always been there, crossing over each other. Um, and of course the main line's improved over time and the Heritage Line um, will show its age in other ways, such as a tender first steam engine. <laughs> Right, so next step, I'm going to uh, remove these and uh, take them outside. I'm going to begin the painting process and I'll show you exactly how I'll go about that. So I've just nipped into the garden where it's uh, nicely ventilated because I'm going to spray the um, uh, plastic um, with this Rust-Oleum terracotta um, colour. Um, the main reason I do this, because um, it's roughly the same colour as the plastic down below, is mainly just to give the um, next few layers of paint a key to stick to rather than the plastic and you'll see why I need a key in a moment.
I've come back inside now and as you can see the pieces are laid out before you and uh, dry ready for the next stage. Um, in real terms you can do this pretty quickly especially on hot days like today I think it's nearly 30 degrees outside so paint is drying extremely quickly so it does allow this sort of process to come on quickly and of course the end result can be quite random so I would always suggest, oh, let's put it in the camera, to do all the pieces at the same time, just so whichever way it comes out in the end, they look roughly similar, if that makes sense. So the first step, which I'm going to show you how to do on this piece, um, will require colours of choice, but I've chosen Humbral Acrylic, uh, this is uh, Royal Blue, I believe, and then I've got the uh, Humbral Acrylic Sea Grey. And I'm going to go to town putting polka dot spots on this piece. Now normally you could uh, mix paint to the required colour in a uh, sort of petri dish or a sample or even on the paper just next to uh, the uh, plastic card in question but I like just to do this because as I say less washing up. Taking a uh, brush I will just swirl it in and as you can see the colours blend in quite randomly. Don't worry at this stage how it comes out because there are many layers ahead of us. And of course this is half the fun, is the mystery of how it's going to come out. As you can see that's blending in to become quite a nice blue-grey. Hopefully, as you can see, what I'm aiming for is a pretty much a constant covering. However, um, patches and things like that are absolutely fine. But the paint itself isn't thick enough to actually go into the mortar course at this stage, which is perfect. Um, all will be revealed very soon. So what I'm going to do now is cover the rest of the pieces, just like this one, and then leave them to dry for 10 or 15 minutes in the sun, and then. Uh, continue on to the next phase. So as you can see, these are all nicely baked in the sun. So what I'm going to do now is uh, taking some kitchen towel and some uh, acrylic thinners. I'm just going to add that to a bit of kitchen towel and quite literally just brush off the paint. Now again, you want this to be a nice and slow process because you don't want to remove the paint completely. So it will take some some going at it. And there we go. As you can see, these are two bits that I've uh, done previously. Now these, once again, I'm going to set to one side along with all the rest and allow the uh, thinners to dry. And then we can get on with the next step.
that didn't work. So these pieces are now all dry and as you can see they look very dark. Now I don't want it to be that dark so what I'm going to do now is build up the layers yet again and I've got some uh, Tamiya acrylic wooden deck tan, it's XF78 if you can see that, there you go. And following the same process previously except with one colour this time, I'm just going to paint straight over the top of all of this. Again, not too thick so it doesn't actually go into the mortar course where possible. He says as he puts a big dollop of paint on. There we go. And then rather quickly I'm going to take a piece of kitchen towel and begin rubbing it off. As you can see, that's definitely lightened up the, uh, the brickwork substantially. However, what I'm going to do is put a tiny bit of thinners again onto the kitchen towel. I think the paint's drying ever so slightly too quickly in this heat. And then following the same process, wiping it down. And there we go, you can see how it comes up as uh, a bit more realistic with all the various tones and colours in there. Now you'll see here there's a bit where I've um, probably taken off a bit too much paint, however the variety in this brickwork is perfect. So I'm going to now repeat that process to the rest of the pieces. And then once it's dry, I'm going to go over it with some matte coat varnish and I'll show you my last step. And don't forget, of course, when you're doing all this at home, if you fancy having a go, doesn't matter if you build up any different colours, things like that, you can take them off with thinners and go back all the way back to the uh, plain bare plastic. So it's quite a fun process, really. Just don't worry about adding too much or taking too much off. You can always add it back. Or take it back. Right, let's continue. Right, so as you can see, these have been uh, rubbed down now and uh, they're suitably patchy. Um, you could say not very realistic if, with all these patches. However, the next step should, fingers crossed, touch wood, touch everything, should tie it all together. Um, and as you can see from the, the various test piece, once we've added the mortar level, it all blends in. Right. So <clears throat> the next step once I've finished the colours is to add in uh, some uh, varnish. Um, this is the matte coat varnish. Um, and just like the paint, 
we're just going to cover it over and let it dry. So all those uh, wall pieces are drying, the, the uh, varnish on them is drying. Um, I just wanted to trim back some of the polystyrene to fit the wing sides of the uh, bridge here. Now as you can see, um, this while the polystyrene is uh, quite nicely shaped, it's not very realistic because it just sort of mounds up to the bridge sides. So all I'm going to do, using these spare pieces that come in the kit, position them as such and just hopefully sculpt out the scene a bit better. Remembering that the polystyrene is the very, very base layer, so it doesn't matter if you take too much out because we're still going to build it up with a few layers before we're done. Right, so while the uh, walls are drying, I'm going to get the hot wire cutter back out and start trimming it down. There we go. As you can see, it's just opened up the scene a bit more and uh, will allow me to uh, detail um, the junction because, of course, we're going to have a the main road going there and then this will be the road leading up to the depot scene. So you can see how we're sort of trying to plan it out with the uh, polystyrene. I'm sure it'll be uh, um, cut down again probably 10 times over before I... Uh, put all the uh, plaster bandage and whatnot on top of it but uh, it's nice to uh, make a start right as you can see in the top right corner of your screens the uh, the wall pieces should be about dry now so it's time to show you the final step for this video so I'm not sure if you can see it's not quite dry yet however I do have a piece that I have previously done which I'm just going to show you this next step before getting on so if I just move this out of the way, what we're going to do now is take some Hobbycraft acrylic uh, white paint and this will form the mortar for the brickwork. Now this is quite fun, it's already been quite a messy fun process really. All we need to do now is dollop a giant piece in the middle and then uh, I like to use my finger rather than a brush and spread it out quite thick you can do with this paint because it's cheap and cheerful wipe off some excess always fun doing anything like this on camera and then while it's still wet I want to try and wipe off as much as possible with some fresh kitchen towel or a fresh edge to the kitchen towel I'm just going to pick that up Hopefully you can still see it on camera. And I always try and wipe along with the brickwork. Again, trying to use a fresh edge of the kitchen towel each time. And you can see, I think to the, on the camera, looking at the screen, it looks quite, um, it looks a lot whiter than it actually is. This is quite, a, well, you don't use the uh, thinners on this one. There we go. Now this has obviously been a really quick demonstration on the camera, if I can focus in. There we go, technical difficulties. So as you can see, uh, the white paint has basically just filled in all the mortar course. You can no longer see all the sort of patchy um, tan colour. Um, the only thing I would really change about this is once it's dry, the white doesn't stand out as much however you can constantly go back over it now the reason you put the varnish on is because you can uh, attack basically this white layer without going through to affect the coloring underneath the varnish acts as a bit of protection for you now an area which uh, is worth paying close attention to with some cotton buds now stupidly i've not got any is 
under any sort of shelf or this is a uh, uh, you can see the uh, capping stones they stick out and they stop your fingers getting in there leaving a white strip which isn't too realistic so what I'll do is I'll go back over it with cotton buds at a later date and uh, just take it off now I might need some thinners for that because it could dry at that point but uh, hopefully as you can see it's looking rather good especially when we compare it to uh, how we started out right so I'm now going to uh, finish the rest of them put them back in position and we'll see how they do So I'd just like to say a big thank you as ever for everyone who watches and takes the time to comment. Hopefully this has been some use to some and if nothing else it kills a bit of time while you're at work. So next time I will probably either continue with the girders and then some more of the ground scene. I'm getting ever so close to having to commit to actually doing all the ground scenery on this side of the layout and it will really really start to come together. Even though you can see what just a cheap wills kit has achieved to really tie the scene together and it's actually nice to get um, back into a bit of modeling right here's me waffling thank you as ever for watching don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you leave a comment i will do my best to reply thank you very much to the channel patrons as ever hope you enjoyed the uh, behind the scenes content on the run-up to this video right take care and i'll see you very soon in the next one.